Hi everybody, my name's Chris and welcome to this video which is going to be my review of this bit of kit here. This is the Strand Hog tactical plate carrier made by First Spear LLC. Now before I fire straight into the actual meat of the review, um, a few bits to say. Uh, for the guys that have uh, subscribed to the channel for a while, um, guys who maybe subscribe while I've been away, I have been off, it's been about four months or so, I've been uh, down to Falklands uh, on a deployment there. Um, doing maintenance work on the Mauser 27mm cannon for the Typhoon aircraft that we, we have down there at Mount Pleasant. Um, I can only apologise for not being able to upload anything but the internet down there is slow as hell, it's a pretty remote island. But uh, for the guys that stayed subscribed to the channel that time, thanks very much, um, I hope you'll like this review. Uh, for everyone else that doesn't know me or anything about me, I'm a uh, like I say, my name's Chris, I've, I'm a, an armourer in the Royal Air Force, I've been in just over five years now, just had my fifth year anniversary last week, and uh, yeah, so, um, I'm, a, I'm an airsoft player, gear enthusiast, guns, yeah, all that sort of thing. So, as you'll see from the other videos on my channel, I like to do a lot of this sort of reviewing review and kit. Uh, for anyone who's interested in what I got up to when I was down the Falklands, you can click up here, and uh, watch some of that, or up here, see some flying. Um, hopefully, enjoy those. But anyway, onto the Strand Hog. Now, first beer are relatively new on the scene, certainly compared to some of the other companies like Black Hawk, for example, or Eagle Industries, who've been around for years and years. First beer only been about for a couple of years now, but a lot more innovation f coming out from them from what we've seen so far. I mean, 2012, they brought out a lot of new products, really, really pushing those design boundaries, coming up with really clever new stuff. And the Strandhog is a perfect example of how innovative they are being with the gear they're making. Now, the actual word itself, it probably sounds like a strange name for a plate carrier. Strandhog is a... Uh, it was a sort of Viking Norse sort of term hundreds of years ago, back when those Viking guys, they were raiding, they were taking the ships across the water and they were raiding and pillaging and all that good stuff. The term was used to describe a tactic that essentially involved infiltrating your, uh, your enemy you know, base, whatever location you were going to be raiding, using stealth diversions, all that sort of thing to infiltrate and then deliver a decisive blow. Um, according to First Beer, these these guys, these Viking guys, were the first to have used this sort of tactic. Um, I've not really researched it myself, but I'm sure they're right. And basically, that's their that's the philosophy they took when they were designing this plate carrier. It was because that was the first time that tactic was used, and it was really effective. And then, so what they've done with this plate carrier is use technologies first time a lot of this stuff has ever appeared. On a piece of tactical gear, and they think it's you know going to be really well, you know, just good. That, that's that's their basic mindset behind it. Um, the actual one I've got here, this is obviously as you can see, it's multi cam. I've gone for a size small. Um, regardless of sizing, the size you select is the size of the plates. This is a sappy cut, as you can see, rather than the, I think it's the MBAV cut is the other one they offer. I can't remember exactly the, the name of it, but it's a different type of plate. Uh, basically, as, as I say, the, the sizing option you choose when you buy one of these dictates how large this pouch is, and the, the back panel as well. Front panel, back panel, that's what's going to change. It, people that are used to buying clothing, small, medium, large, XL, they're going to expect that perhaps you know the cummerbund and the, the shoulder straps and that sort of thing will change with the sizing. I'm, I'm not 100%, I mean they may do, but the main thing that you're choosing in your sizing is your plates. Okay, so first off, customer service from First Bear itself. Excellent, really impressed with them. Uh, I had, I've had to wait quite a while for this to get here. Uh, I had originally ordered it well over a month ago. I had to wait for about, it's about 35 days-ish from originally placing the order to when they actually shipped them because there was backlog with these. Um, this is pretty much the first run that's come out. It may be the first one. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the only one in Britain anyway. Uh, not 
you know, this is like I say, new on the scene. I know Chris Costa, he's been seen running prototype one of these for a little while. But you know, finally it's available. You can uh, they, they've sent out large batches of them now. The last time I looked on Op Tactical, they did have some stock of the mediums and the multicam and some large and coaty brown. Whether they still got them, I'm not sure. But like I say, I ordered this direct from First Beer. Comms with them the whole time, emailing them back and forth. Really good, really professional. Very quick on the replies. Overall, extremely happy with them. In terms of the basic philosophy behind the design, excluding the, the idea of the whole strand hold concept and the new technologies, it, this all a lot of this stuff emerged. If any of you that followed the videos that came out of Shot Show this year's Shot, the one um, back in I think it was February, might be January, can't, can't remember exactly, but all the video stuff came over there. If you watched a lot of the videos from the gear manufacturers that came out of that show, what you will have heard again and again and again was the word lightweight, 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 lightweight. Just so many different companies. That's that is the, that is the, the fucking the new wave this year. Fucking flavor of the month, you know lightweight kit all about because soldiers nowadays they're carrying more and more and more equipment their guns are getting heavier more rails accessories on those rails heavier bigger heavier optics um, backpacks just absolutely full of comms equipment ammo explosives and it's you, you know there needs to be something had to give someone had to need to say right well if we're going to add all this weight on here, we need to take some away on the other side. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to move around anymore. So you've seen, you've seen uh, Helium Whisper from Blue Force Gear. They've been making pretty lightweight patches for a while anyway, but you've got a new Helium Whisper line, really light stuff. You've got the Fight Light from Tactical Taylor, all 500 denier Cordura pouches and vests and belts, all that sort of stuff. This, this isn't a totally new concept. LBT have been making stuff out of 500 denier and 330 denier Cordura for a little while already, but that wasn't it wasn't so mainstream. This year, that's been pushed right up to the front and center, right in the limelight. That is the focus from a lot of companies. And First Beer is pushing it to a level that's even above what some of the others are doing by quite a way in some senses. So, Speaking of that, in terms of the lightweight, what's the first thing to look at? Well, one of the most obvious things that you notice when this compared to any conventional multi-platform is the lack of webbing. It, you know, it's just, they've cut out all those straps of webbing material that you would normally have going all across, all around your rig. And they've done that by using laser cut now the actual the main construction material we'll go into a bit more in depth than the various different materials I've used later but the main material that they've used this is a 500 denier Cordura obviously this is multicam so it's all all the multicam stuff is the official cry precision materials but like I say it's a 500 denier Cordura it's uh, it's lined with a sort of a velcro type material on the inside and uh, it's what they do is they lay out the sheets on a on a bed on the machine laser cuts all these slots so they're done absolutely precisely perfectly exactly the same consistent every single time and then rather than threading your pouches through actual uh, actual webbing strips as you would do with something like this all you do is just take the straps and you just thread them in and out of these laser cut slots and it allows you to attach all your uh, standard legacy molly pouches but the real thing that First Bear are pushing, at least from their point of view, is what they call the 612 system now. This, this is only part of 612. This sort of laser cut molly system that's legacy compatible and also with new kinds is coming out. There's a few, there's a couple of other companies, 511 previewed a plate carrier that they're working on at the moment that's going to have some of this laser cut stuff in it. Personally I've been calling it inverse molly. That's, I don't know, when I first saw it that's what it looked like to me. Um, but it, it's a genius idea. You have you can attach all your normal molly pouches, they fit on just fine, just the same as they ever had on any old vest. Your older rigs, your older plate carriers, chest rigs, tactical vests, whatever. But you've just, like I say, you've cut out, you know, quite a lot of bulk and weight in all those strips of webbing 
that you don't have to sew on, and all that thread as well that we had to sew on. We're only talking ounces here, but as they always say, ounces add up to pounds. Pounds add up, you know, a, cu a couple of pounds off your gear when you're tabbing miles and miles it makes all the difference, it really does. So, like I say, compatible with all your pouches, but the 612 stuff from First Beer, that I haven't got any of the, their pockets here as an example, unfortunately, but if you go on to, um, if you just look at any of the SHOT Show videos, you can just browse for them on YouTube, have a search, you'll be able to find their stuff from this year and you'll be able to have a look at how it attaches. Essentially, because this is all Velcro lined in here, the, their, their 612 pockets, they have small triangular flaps on the back which also have corresponding Velcro and what that means is you can cut out straps like this one and that means that not only is your rig lighter from not having all the webbing but the pouches are a lot lighter as well, much less cordura, much less thread, less plastic stiffening, all that stuff, just cut it right out and all those weight savings that do add up, um, you're talking anywhere from 20 to 40 percent depending on what proportion, what kind of lightweight gear you're using from what manufacturers using this kind of kit versus the old school of everything being being thousand denier cordura and metal press stud buckles and, and all that sort of thing. So that's 612. All that said however I think, or to me at least personally the thing that's even more interesting about this new kit compared to the 612 is the tubes system. Now what the tubes are what you see here, there's different sizes of them, these plastic portions with the pull cords, they are, I, I think, absolutely genius. Essentially, just what it means is massively, massively sped up ingress and egress from your gear, your armour carrier. Essentially all it is, is two plastic pieces, say let's take this shoulder strap for example, Got a female portion on the strap here, got a male portion attached to the front plate pouch. Just grab your cord and that's it. That's all it takes to disconnect. And obviously, if you did that from there as well, you're going to be able to get out of your plate carrier nice and quick in that emergency situation. You know, you've, you've fallen in deep water, fire, physical injury through bullet wound, shrapnel, anything like that. And then to reconnect, just thrown together, simple as that. But if you don't specifically grab this cord, um, paracord pull and pull it in the right way, it's not going anywhere. Then they're not going to come off on you when you don't want them. It's secure, absolutely 100% secure. And yet, as I showed just then, when you do want to get out, whether it's just normal, you know, you're just taking your armour off, or it is that emergency situation, it's as quick as grabbing that, and there you go, and if you were in that emergency situation of having to dump your gear, then you do the side as well, and that's it, you're out. And then assembly it back together, or just putting the gear on, slot the tubes back together like so. Second, obviously the old convention was to have flat system here, a bloody football field size piece of velcro going all the way across there, massive flaps of velcro coming in from the cummerbund, more velcro getting sandwiched down on top of all of it and it was it was slow, velcro wears out, it's noisy as hell, uh, you, you could never really get consistency with the attachment of your cummerbund and when you've got side plates in here that you need to be sitting on your body in the same place time after time, uh, flotation systems as well it just wasn't ideal. The tubes, the cummerbund's going to sit exactly the same place on your body every single time you attach it, quieter and massively faster. So those, those are your two main things, the, the sort of things that pop out, you, you know, the most obvious things as soon as you just look at this, that's, those are the two systems you think, hmm, yeah, what's going on with that? So yeah, the, those, those are the, the two key features of this thing certainly looking on the outside, um, the, the innovations anyway. So let's, uh, let's, let's look at a few other little details that are present on the externals. Now, you've got six columns width here on your front plate pouch, 
so you've got th space for three 5.56 30 round magazines or you know, lying flat if that's if you're not double stacking up on pouches attachment points with the tubes for your shoulder straps move around the cummerbund tube on each side I've got mine tightened down quite a lot right now because I'm pretty thin but you've got space for side plates inside the cummerbund here on the back adjustment sections for your shoulder straps just up here the, uh, the cummerbund is actually adjusted for size inside there and it feeds all the way through that opening in the rear plate pouch rear plate pouch itself got a drag handle any good kit bit of a uh, low bearing kit vest whatever is going to have a drag handle multi-cam webbing secure down with velcro kept out of the way when it's not in use because you don't want to snag hazard with your drag handle there but it's there for that shit hit the fan situation when someone's got to be dragging your ass out of the hot zone um, so but that's that's kind of it on the outside there isn't there isn't a lot to see when you when you take out the 612 and the tube from the equation it's fairly plain but that's what you want you want something that's just it's going to carry your armor plates maybe soft armor this can take soft armor as well your pouches for your comms your ammo your hydro etc and just be comfortable and do that comfortably you don't you don't need a mass amount of stuff and certainly in terms of that speaking of the tubes that quick disconnect functionality when you compare that to say a Siraz vest land or maritime the, that metal cable you had to thread through everywhere and it's just a fucking nightmare they really were massively improved so much so much material saved on not having to have that cable and all the metal eyelets and the cordura straps they were the, the grommets were attached to and all that stuff none, none of this sort of the potential i mean you know if you got that stuff wrong with those old school wire based uh quick disconnect um you know quick escape systems from with armor rigs if you set that up wrong you're you're in for fucking trouble because your armor's just gonna fall off you and fuck off somewhere um, when you least expect it and that's not what you want but even when you do have them right they're just bulky and heavy not good slow tubes massive improvement so that's looking in general um, like I said we haven't really gone too much in the construction materials yet so what I'm going to do just now for you guys I'm going to break strand dog here down into its main components and I'm going to look in a bit closer detail uh, how they're constructed and the exact features on the inside of the rig so let's do that now all right there we go uh, pretty easy to do overall start off here with the front plate and come a bit close to the camera for this part so here is your front plate pouch as you can see it's it's just so compact this and streamlined very very nice nice to see nice and simple now we already looked at on the outside here like I say this is a 500 denier Cordura with the laser cut inverse molly holding your actual tubes the male portions on you've got your cry multi-cam webbing really strong stuff plenty of a uh, double triple stitching going all around there I don't know which actual thread type they've used unfortunately I can't tell you that but I think it's safe to assume it's going to be pretty strong nylon bonded mil spec stuff IRR rot resistant all that good good kind of stuff going on with the uh, larger tube again loops cry webbing holding that on nice and secure internally there you can see the, uh, the actual velcro that would be used for the 612 pockets the, uh, it, this isn't your conventional hook and loop stuff this is this is the actual loop proportion of that system portion even um, and if I get for example get this HSGI mag pouch here now that that is conventional standard hook and loop that's the loop side 
if you compare that side by side hopefully you can see the difference in how much sort of thicker and coarser that conventional stuff is which is a, another area first gear have really done well in terms of the materials that they've selected for this this is really fine smooth lightweight it's not going to fray and cut away and wear down as quick as that other stuff is looking again on the inside this uh, this divider here you tear that open that's where your sappy plate is going to go I'd have to say the first time I went to pull that out because because of the nature of this laser cut stuff it was all sort of uh, doing all this kind of thing and I was wor worried that these stress points here on the edge of each hole were just going to rip but they just don't in fact regards that there's a lot of people been querying you know is this stuff is it going to be very durable because it doesn't look it and you would forgive anyone who's used to the old school thousand D with the, with the webbing straps I think oh, that's just going to rip because you've just got you've just got stress points at the uh, at the very very sides there of each slot you'd think you're just going to cause rips but it just doesn't there is a video again from the shot show I'll try and put the link down in the description if I can find it there is some one he's literally he's just sort of I think he's got something tied through one of these and he's just hanging it off putting it full weight you know trying to trying to rip this material and it just doesn't it's incredibly strong for some reason I'm not sure if they've given the Cordura some sort of a treatment or or whether it's the backing material they've used I don't know what they've done but it's really really strong but yeah as mentioned internal pouch for your plate there's a first beer label size small made in the USA very compliant all that good stuff you've got a nice little uh, sort of little webbing strap that's a, just a handle to help facilitate extracting the actual flap that holds the plate in secure that away again Uh, the actual it's all a lot of it is mesh um, with the exception of this outside layer you've just got mesh now moving on to the actual inner surface the, the area that's going to be against your body you've got two materials here you've got this 3d spacer mesh brilliant for airflow and you've got two built-in sections of a sort of it's kind of like a neoprene foam kind of, uh, a black stuff you've probably seen it on other tactical gear but it's all it's all sewn in and integrated and what you notice is there's two there's two vertical strips of it here that have been mounted in to the front pouch. And what that creates is a sort of valley. And when that sits against your body, rather than just being uniformly flat against your chest, and it's the same on the back porch as well, rather than just being flat against it, what's going to happen is the air is actually going to flow down that channel that's created. You've got another you've got another sort of mesh material here. This isn't the 3D spacer stuff. But the stuff around the, the foam is so that, that like i say it creates this channel down it's gonna so you've not only got the air flowing through the mesh as you would on a lot of other types of gear but you've got that channel going straight down it and that doesn't really improve or it, it doesn't impede should i say on the fitment or the comfort in any way it's that, that's really really clever bit of design for first bit there this area of loop velcro i'm not sure why it's there personally because it's on the inside usually on a lot of play carriers you would expect if you look at the LBT the 6094 they tend to have little strips of velcro velcroed up molly webbing strips and that's good for blood type zap tags um, you know name patches unit patches whatever I'm not sure what the idea is on the inside maybe they're planning some sort of accessories um, um, maybe it's sort of going to integrate some sort of uniform so that it holds in position. I'm, I'm not sure about that. If anyone does know, please do comment and let me know. But that is uh, that's that. That's your, your front plate. Let's get right around to the back plate. Essentially, similar story here to the front. Same material, same construction again. Um, more multi-cam webbing holding shoulder straps in place 
same sort of a same loop velcro high quality stuff for your 612 pockets same pouch system holding your plate in there and there's actually a divider I, I didn't mention this with the front there's a divider in there that's made a mesh velcro again and I think that'll be for your soft armour going behind in there not 100% on that one but it, I mean the soft arm's going to go somewhere and obviously that's the, that's the only other place it could go so that, that'll be for that As I mentioned, exact same channel system going on. You got your 3D spacer mesh on either side, padded out, no padding down the centre. Get that airflow coming in, hot air rising up out of there, cool air being allowed to flow through, just keeping you cool, helping all that sweat wick away, evaporate off your body. Should be good. I mentioned the drag handle already. That's your opening there for the common one to pass through. So let's go on to the shoulder straps now. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, uh, there has been. I've seen one review of this particular Blake Harry already, and uh, one of the criticisms that guy had was that he felt these shoulder straps are hard to adjust. Now, I wouldn't say hard. I'd say this is one design area first bit could have perhaps done slightly better. It's not bad by any stretch, it's just not perfect. To actually adjust your shoulder straps, what you do, I've lengthened these quite a lot already from how it came from the factory. Just undo that, separate this portion. So you've got your main strap and this is like a, a Velcro piece. And then what you've got to do is feed this, you've got to feed this piece through this plastic buckle. The problem is you've got hook Velcro on there and then loop Velcro going all the way around so you've actually got to pull that through and as you see it's not it's not that hard it's just it's just not ideal really so when, when you've done that just set it in the position you want place that back down and there you guys as you can see I've pretty much got mine at the uh, the farthest length it will go now it was a lot further up there when I started and that's what it looks like with the actual shoulder pad on I've removed the pad from the other strap for now but that's how it looks I'll, I'll grab the actual pad to have a look at them because this is a very small piece of gear but it's very very well designed and um, you know, bearing in mind you'll have a lot of weight hanging down on your shoulders there look on the inside first 3d spacer mesh the actual pad itself if I open this up you can see see that sort of neoprene -y sort of uh, rubber foam not exactly sure of the material there isn't a lot of description of the precise materials they've used in the product description will first be a site but it's good stuff and as you can see they've, they've perforated it that's going to help with the heat distribution uh, the moisture wicking and um, the airflow all that good stuff upper surface this is Cry's actual uh, multicam sort of elastic material if you if you're familiar with the gen 3 combat trousers from them the area just around top of your knee there that la and uh, there's an area around the back as well on those combat trousers that stretchable fabric on the gen 3 on the gen 2 multicam combat trousers they were it was just a tan elastic on the gen 3 they brought in uh, multicam matching if you selected the multicam trousers and this is that same material they've used here they've not used cordura on the shoulder pads this is that same cry elastic Good faithful representation of the pattern as with all the other materials they've used that aren't actual cordura. Uh, very comfortable as well. Finally, uh, last material they've got, this is a this is a sort of I, I've got to realize, I'm not sure what kind of a material this brown stuff is. It's uh, it's made by a I did a little bit of research into it. It's, it's made by a company in Sweden, or at least it's a, the actual original design for it came from there. And it's a sort of, it's a, it almost feels like a plasticized cordura. Sort of, if, if you look really closely, you might just be able to see it's, it's almost, it's almost looked like it's kind of stitched like threads. But it, it feels, it's got a sort of plasticky feeling to the touch. 
and yet it's very strong. You know, um, you've got these perforations here. And I think if I were to try and rip that, um, that that point there probably would go. But in in the in that actual direction, putting forces on that, I mean that's 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 not going anywhere. Very I, I believe I believe the company's called uh, Troll Trollborg Trolleborg something along those lines. Berg, I can't, I can't remember the exact spelling. I apologise for that. But it's it's a very innovative material. And what you'll see here, if you look on, this is a Blue Force gear helium whisper pouch. And what you see, it's the same stuff um, that they've used on the new helium whisper backing line from Blue Force gear. And uh, first, we've actually been making a few pouches and wallets and other merch like that from this uh, this same material. And it's quite impressive stuff. So that's your shoulder pad. Last component here, cover bond. I'll start at one end. Here's your, uh, here's a female part of your the large tube. On the inside, again a sort of a horizontal version of the front and back plate pouches. You've got foam installed into here, channel for airflow created by those two. Gives you a gap down the middle, 3D spacer mesh, standard mesh through the middle. Same 500D core Dura. Now, for attaching your pouches, as with the front and back, to, to actually thread your pouches through this inverse mold, you're going to need really to open up the, uh, the strand bolt. It's, it's a little bit fiddly, but then you're not going to be doing all that often. So. And this doing this is what I thought would break this uh, this laser cut stuff, but it just doesn't. It's surprisingly strong. Just open that up like that, and that is your flap that's going to hold in your side plate, your flotation, what whatever. And you can see right inside there, mesh material just going straight through. And there's your uh, yeah, nice low profile, nice and smooth loop of your hook and loop. Um, we'll fold that back in, back away from now. I've done that perfectly, that'll be right. And the actual adjustment in terms of your waist size. This sits here, you know, like so. What we've got is more of this uh, sort of plastic, plasticized fabric. I'm, like I say, I'm still not sure exactly what it is, but it is strong. Um, very good stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll be trying to find out some more information on this kind of material uh, when I'm done making this video. As you see, the uh, cum bund. The, the size is adjusted it's essentially through threading. You've got this strip of this tough bungee cord, and then you can either close this gap up, like I've done here. I mean, I've got mine at pretty much the minimum setting because I'm a lanky streak of piss, as my colleagues would put it. Um, uh, but as you can see, with the amount of bungee I've got spare there, you, you're going to be able to separate these out a long way. So you can go all the way down to someone as fucking pencil shaped as me, all the way up to much bigger guys that actually have some muscle on them. And even if they're wearing, say, an extra soft armor vest underneath, you can open that right out. Big range of adjustment there. And then you've got your other side, you come bond, which is it, yeah, exactly the same. Just a mirror image of there. More of your what well, can webbing material to hold the female part of the tube on. I'm not sure. My first impression of these paracord uh, drags or grab tabs, I, I I wasn't certain about them. They looked a bit long, but I think once you, you get it in hand, it's only it's only about that big in your hand, and I've got quite small hands. It's only sort of about three fingers width. It's it's enough to grab on so that you can securely uh, disconnect that tube system. 
but not too big and they've put this uh, heat shrink around the paracord that's going to stop it stop the whole length of the cord just separating out like that sort of and, and flopping around and being too much of a snag as that controls it a lot melted the ends on it obviously the actual polymer they've used in the construction of the tube I'm not sure what it is but it's got it's, it's holding this sort of texture to it whether that's deliberate or that's just part of the manufacturing process I'm not certain interesting to see though it's certainly very very tough it's it's a thick plastic you can see there whether because this this section here is what actually secures the tube in place secures the male and the female together whether you're going to start to get um, wear on this point here and, and this point I'm not sure I've, I've disconnected this a few times already and I can't actually see you'd start you'd expect to start to see scuffing straight away but I'm not actually seeing anything which is a positive sign so that's the uh, that's a cum bundle there for you so what I'm going to do now I'm going to uh, reassemble the strand hook have it from uh, down to component parts as easy as that so there we go assembled um, actually putting it on incredibly quick and easy pull the tube away like that and then slide back together and it's on um, very very quick indeed it is very comfortable I mean I don't have plates in or pouches at the moment uh, that that'll be something to do a little bit later on. Uh, you've got to adjust it to, to your own fit. Obviously, you've got to make sure your your plates are going to sit. I, I, they're about in the right place for me at the moment. I maybe could have gone for a, a medium instead of the small plate. It might have fit me a bit better, but it's it's not it's not too much of an issue. The actual getting out of the plate carrier. A lot of people tell. I've seen videos where they say pull away and then down, but. I find it much easier if you just go in a sort of diagonal direction away from here, it just comes away as easy as that. And obviously for standard day-to-day -day removing, you can just do that. In, in an emergency situation, you know, um, let's, if, if you've, say you, you're going down the water strapped in an aircraft, you've got your actual aircraft harness off, but then you've still got your armor weighing you down. So all you've got to do, side first, cummerbund, gone, shoulder strap, gone, and that's it, it's off. So there you have it. Very nice safety feature there. Get it nicely aligned. There, go, there we go. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have seen one other review of this, um, and in, in that, the guy he bought sappy cut in multi cam, same as me. I think I'm not sure which size he'd gone for, but part of that he highlighted that on his front panel he had the standard sappy cut, you know, the, the angle in the front pouch, and similar thing on the back. But then one side was more of a rounded, more of a sort of cut for a different plate. Didn't, didn't seem to be constructed quite right, and again, it just wasn't symmetrical at the back. In, in these sort of top areas and also he had a bit of an issue in that admittedly this doesn't sit very well at the moment by itself because it's got no plates in um, the, because it's so lightweight there's not many actual materials to it it, it doesn't you know the, the older school of vests especially with plates in they'd stand just as if you were wearing them even if you sat them down on the table but here's the uh, the actual sort of the, the assembly just didn't seem to have gone right there was not enough material on this side and too much on that side it's just not consistent not symmetrical at all um, his thought being that well it's a first run and you always get issues in first runs well I don't think that's right personally uh, $400 plate carrier you, they better damn well be getting it right I mean the actual the actual amount of cordura and stuff that are in this 
don't get me wrong, it's all high quality materials, but there isn't $400 worth of materials in this plate carrier, you know, far from it. it. They should damn well be getting that quality control right. Mine's fine. I've, I've spent quite a few hours literally pouring in detail over every little area of this to fully check it over every stitch, and I can't find an issue. You certainly shouldn't be paying $400 for something that's when you, your plate pouches are half one shape, half the other. Inconsistent laser cut molly. Uh, nah, that, that wouldn't be acceptable in my mind. But like I say, my one, very happy. Great service from them. Great product. Uh, you know, I would say, guys, keep your eyes out for this art with, you know, I would think we're going to see a lot of people start using it. Because it brings a lot of innovation to the table. And uh, yeah, very pleased overall. So uh, that's, that's that for the first spear strand hog, sappy cut. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, cheers for watching. I'll be uh, any Any questions you might have, please do put it down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them as, you know, as well as I can. And uh, I'll see you next time.